Well, welcome to the final part of topic two for channel hydraulics, where we talk about gradually varied flow profiles. There's been quite a bit of mathematical theory to get your head around in the first two parts. Um, we'll ease up on that now in part three, and, and it's a bit more conceptual. We'll talk about the controls that produce critical flows. Uh, we'll talk about upstream and downstream controls, gradually varied flow profiles, and then what do you do about calculating Froude number when you have a natural channel rather than a, a rectangular channel. So firstly, controls. Well, remember I said um, that the um, that at a, um, a a critical flow, if we know the discharge, then we can estimate the depth. So um, we know that a critical flow is produced um, as flow passes over a weir. That's the transition from um, a a mild sl slope to a to a steep slope. Um, um, so subcritical to to supercritical flow at normal depth. Um, and we get critical flow at the crest of the of the weir, um, and so uh, this is the formula that I flagged earlier on. And um, hydrographers use this relationship to calculate discharge um, based on observations of stage using a stage recorder. So all across um, Australia and in other countries, in order to monitor stream flows. Hydrographers have built weirs in rivers, um, which establish a critical flow depth over the weir, um, and then um, the uh, the discharge is calculated as a function of the of the depth above the weir. Sometimes it's not the critical flow depth. There's different types of weirs, um, but that's a common approach. And we can see upstream of the weir that we have um, a a backwater curve, and as we go upstream from the weir we approach the normal depth eventually further upstream. We go over, this, over the crest of the weir, we go to supercritical flow. Presumably downstream here we'll have a hydraulic jump and back to, to subcritical flow conditions. So let's think about flow profiles in, um, in a river, long section. This is uh, just an idealized situation where we have the long profile of the riverbed in brown um, with a couple of high points here and here and a weir. Um, and then the water surface profile in blue. Well, firstly, there's two key features here that we should recognize immediately, and that's um, these two controls, which will produce um, critical flow. Because we have um, supercritical flow on the downstream face here. That's because we've got a hydraulic jump, it must be supercritical. Subcritical flow upstream, and again, subcritical, um, and presumably this is supercritical because it's steeper than this one. So two controls where we get critical flow. Upstream of these critical flows, we get backwater areas. So um, the in these areas, the water surface profile is controlled by the downstream control. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so the um, water surface profile is influenced by the downstream control. So remember, at subcritical flow, um, the wave speed is faster than the, the current speed. So you can get an, infl an upstream influence of the um, of the uh, the weir. And as we go further upstream in this uh, weir pool, this is a weir pool here, eventually um, this we return to what looks to be like more like a uniform flow conditions where the, the level is controlled by the local flow resistance. So we have a force balance here that we've talked about before and uniform flow conditions. We can also see here um, a section of supercritical flow downstream of um, this um, uh, crest of this, this riffle or uh, high point in the bed. And likewise, there's supercritical flow here. And in those regions, it's an upstream control because you can't get upstream propagation of waves because uh, the flow velocity at supercritical flow is, is faster than the wave velocity. So the water level is controlled by the upstream control. And here we have the hydraulic jump. Okay, so it'd be good for you to work through that yourself um, step by step, I think you, you know enough now to identify um, these various influences on the um, on the water surface profile and to work out whether a water level is controlled just by the local flow resistance, by a downstream control, or by an upstream control. Now I want to just recap on something we covered earlier on um, in the introductory uh, uh, slides, and that's the, the classification of bed slopes. So remember we talked about mild slopes, critical slopes, and steep slopes. And these were defined based on the relative magnitudes of normal depth to critical depth. 
So if the normal depth is greater than the critical depth, so at uniform flow we've got subcritical flow, then it's a mild slope. If the normal depth is less than critical depth, i.e. at uniform flow we have supercritical flow, then it's a steep slope. And the threshold condition in between the two is called the critical slope. Now we're going to use that. Um, oh yeah, here's, here's, here's the equations that we've already covered earlier. So you can actually calculate the normal depth and the and the critical depth. Now, there's a classification of flow profiles um, that's available. It's actually in in, in, um, in a number of textbooks, uh, and it's good just to work through this um, and understand the uh, the various types of flow profiles that you can encounter. So, firstly, um, these profiles are classified based on whether the slope is mild or steep. In fact, there's a critical slope as well. Then it's classified based on whether the water surface profile lies above the normal depth and the critical depth, which is in the one region one, or between the uh, critical depth and the normal depth, which will put it in um, region two, or uh, below both the critical depth and the normal depth, which will put it in region three. So here we have, uh, for example, a steep slope um, where uh, critical flow is greater than normal depth. Um, and the water surface profile is in region 1, so this is the S1 profile. Uh, if we go to a mild slope, here we can see the water surface profile is between the normal depth and the um, critical depth, um, so it's in the region 2. It's a mild slope, so it's an M2 profile. Now all these profiles head towards the normal depth. Okay, They're adjusting towards the normal depth. The distinction between um, steep slopes and mild slopes is, is that on steep slopes it heads downstream um, towards the normal depth and in um, mild slopes it heads upstream towards the normal depth. So here we can see going upstream to normal depth, in a steep slope it's going downstream towards the normal depth. So if I said to you to draw uh, an S3 profile, it's a steep profile, it's heading downstream towards the normal depth because it's a steep um, slope. It's in region 3, so it's below um, both the um, normal depth and the critical depth. And it's steep, so the normal depth is actually below the critical depth. And so we have this situation here. Now if we try and apply this to uh, a real situation here, it's quite straightforward. Upstream of the weir, it's a mild slope, so it's an M um, type profile. The water level is above both the critical depth and the normal depth, so it's in region one, so this is an M1, and it heads upstream back towards normal depth. On the face of um, this weir, it's a steep slope, um, and, and, the, um, and the water surface profile is um, between normal depth and uh, critical depth, so critical depth is above um, normal depth, and the uh, water level is declining towards normal depth downstream. Then once we hit the, the mild slope um, in the in, you know above the hydraulic jump but below the um, the steep slope of the, the weir crest we have an M type slope it's mild um, the, the 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 water level is in region three it's below um, uh, both the uh, the normal depth um, and the critical depth um, because it's a critical flow, so a supercritical flow, so we would call it um, an M3 profile. Okay, now finally, Froude number for a natural channel. Um, so we've said that the Froude number is the velocity divided by the square root of gravitational acceleration times the depth in a rectangular channel. What about in a channel where the depth varies across the cross section? Which depth is it? Is it the maximum depth? the minimum depth, the, the um, hydraulic radius, and in fact um, what, what is used is the what's called the hydraulic depth, which is the mean depth, it's the um, uh, the cross-sectional area divided by width, the hydraulic, the hydraulic depth. Okay, so that's the end of the videos for topic three, sorry, topic two, um, uh, and uh, we have one more topic to go in this first module on, um, on channel hydraulics. Thank you.